So, Mew, the first one is coming soon. Coming soon. You asked for it. Uh, you probably saw me showing this off on a couple of Desk Lady Adas, and it's not out yet. Uh, the Cutie Pie 2040. Uh, I put one together, and it all kind of worked, which is weird, but that sometimes does happen. Um, so it's coming soon. It won't be green. It will be like this, black and white. It might look a little bit different. Um, it's got a Stemic QT connector. It's got 13 GPIO. Um, RP2040, I think it's probably gonna have four megabytes of flash, but if people really want, I can make another version with uh, 16. Um, got NeoPixel, StemQT connector, buttons for reset and boot, uh, you know, nice strong power supply, uh, big capacitors, so it should be really good and stable. It's got castellated pads. You could theoretically mount this onto a PCB, but you'd have to have a cutout in the center. Maybe we'll design an Eagle Cat object with the right size cutout so you can, um, you know, mount this USB-C and all that good stuff. So it's, you know, a great upgrade for the uh, Cutie Pie if you want something even more powerful. This is going to be like a super powerhouse. Okay, next up, this book is um, back. It's back. So uh, this was a uh, voluntary recall. There were a couple typos in this book, um, but luckily they're very easy to fix. We uh, got new versions of the book from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. If you have a Pico and you want to use MicroPython and you want to be entertained and educated at the same time, uh, this book is really wonderful. And um, I think we're sold out, but we're getting more. Uh, there's also a PDF you can download if you just want to uh, read it on your computer screen. But it's a really cute book and a great way to learn electronics, programming, and MicroPython all at once. Next up. Next up, okay, so we've got this really adorable little fingerprint sensor. Um, very, very slim. It's not as cheap as others, but it's like definitely the slimmest one we've got. It's uh, got a little Molex connector that plugs in the back. It's got a plastic piece that lets you panel mount it uh, pretty easily. And it's basically like the thickness of like a nickel. So why don't you go to the overhead and I can show this off and also demo it. So this is the thickness of it. So this is, this plastic piece can come off, but you can see it's like a little panel mount assistant. Um, this is the actual sensor itself. And uh, I've got it wired up here to my feather with an OLED. So let me plug it in. I can do a quick demo. Oops. Um, there are blue LEDs on the bottom. You can see that they sort of shine through. Um, the only reason this is um, flashing is because I do a timeout. Uh, you don't have to have it flash. You can have it just be solid on whenever it's waiting for a fingerprint. Um, put the fingerprint on, and I pre-programmed it with my fingerprints so it knows about three different fingers. ID three. So there you go. It can detect uh, fingers pretty well. Um, this is definitely the slimmest one we've got. So if you're looking for something really compact, we have ones that are less expensive, but they're chunkier. Um, but this one is a very svelte, cute fingerprint sensor. Okay. Right. Next up. Okay, next up, we have updated the e-ink gizmo. You love the e-ink gizmo. You're wondering, oh no, I got discontinued. What happened? Um, what happened is the tricolor 1.5 inch displays we were using were discontinued. The display itself, I couldn't buy any more. So we upgraded it. The new display has more pixels. It's 200 by 200 pixels, tricolor. Um, it does use a different driver. So if you have existing code, you'll just have to change the one line of code where it picks what driver it uses. Um, to use the SSD 1681. Um, and uh, otherwise, it, it's pretty much the same. It, it does look a little different when it updates. It flashes in a different way, but it still takes about 15 seconds. Um, it still uses the same overall library code. So if you're you know, familiar with uh, CircuitPython or um, Arduino, you have code for both. So I thought maybe we showed show it on the, the overhead. Um, just one thing to watch for these inks, you see they take a while to update. This is normal. It does this little flickery, flashy thing. That's it slowly bringing the red in and then adding um, black as well. But you can see it's a really beautiful um, 200 by 200 pixels. That, you know, it's got a great high density resolution. And of course, when I pull the power, uh, it's still on. And I really like the, the red is nice and vivid. The black is, you know, very dark, high contrast. Um, and the resolution is very good. So, um, you know, as e-paper goes, uh, the quality is improving and improving. And as new panels come out, uh, we'll keep updating our products to use the latest technology. 
All right, next up. We've updated the BMP388. Uh, like many other sensors, this got a STEMA QT ification. Same chip, uh, great temperature and pressure sensor from Bosch. Um, very high precision. Now with STEMA QT connectors for plug and play. Um, otherwise, the code and schematic are the same. All right, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, and everybody out there on the Ada for team is. This is, okay, I gotta get the part number right. It's the TPS. 62, 62827. Um, I put the X on there because you know the part number. We could release a version that has a different chip. Um, this is our new product for the week. It's kind of a little basic breakout, but if you need you know up to three amp peak of three volt power from five volts, which I do for a couple products that are coming out, um, this breakout will get it for you. So you have a couple of alkalines or lithium uh, polymer battery or maybe of USB power, and you just need a lot of power at three volts. Um, this is our most powerful buck converter. It's not the widest range. We have a couple that do wider range, but none of them are going to be able to give you up to three amps peak. This one will do two amps continuous, no problem. Um, in theory, you could probably do three amps as well, uh, but you know, it starts to, it does start to overheat a little bit. Also, you have to make sure that your cables are nice and thick. This is a uh, two ounce copper PCB, so that should help a little bit with the current uh, transfer. It uses this really nice uh, TI buck converter that we found um, and it has even a little power good LED that lights up as long as uh, the input voltage is in the right range. So um, if you're like me and you need a lot of 3 volt power, check out this uh, buck converter. All right. What's new products? New, 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 new. 